today we travel back in time to the early 1900s to marvel at the challenges of building this stately South Florida mansion. Hello, I'm Elena Gomez and I'm the curator at Vizcaya Museum and Gardens, a national historic landmark since 1978, an iconic Miami destination. This was James Ewing's winter home. He had multiple states, but by far this was the biggest and probably most expensive one. We take a closer look at some of the design and preservation efforts that makes Vizcaya Museum and Gardens one of the best preserved stately homes on today's SoFlo Home Project. Welcome to SoFlo Home Project, I'm Elena Capra. Vizcaya is considered one of the most opulent estates in the United States and one of the most interesting things about the property is that none of the construction could begin until all interior design elements were brought over from Europe during World War I. Today we'll look at the challenges behind the creation of this mansion, the diverse design styles found in every room, the efforts to maintain and preserve this historic home, and much more. We're here today at the beautiful Vizcaya Museum and Gardens, joined by Elena Gomez, the curator. So welcome to SoFlo Home Project. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming to Vizcaya today. Well, we love touring Vizcaya. Earlier last year, we toured the gardens, but today we are actually going to be touring Vizcaya itself, the home of James Deering. So before we jump into our tour, I thought it'd be great to share with our viewers a little bit of the history of Vizcaya itself. James Deering was an agricultural industrialist from Chicago, and he set his eye here in Coconut Grove, and he was enamored by this property that is oceanfront, as we can see. So behind us, we have Vizcaya, which was built between 1914 and 1916. What we're seeing here is the front of the house instead of like where everyone goes in today is, is the back of the house. The water being such a prominent feature, it became the, the point of focus for Deering. So when he moved in for the first time, he came by boat. And then when you come up, you're actually also greeted. We've got this barge right behind us. That was built also with the original construction and it's a stone barge. So it's just a decorative element that it was meant to protect the house from the storm but it was also highly decorative as you can see has yes. many sculptures lots of details yes lots of details and what we've seen behind is conservation work being carried out on the barge so preservation obviously being a very big part of everything here at Vizcaya right to our left what is this area referred to as this is the tea house uh, and it's a very very popular spot for photography here at Vizcaya so you have a lot of events here this is the spot this is a spot for photography and you were talking about preservation and this uh, structure also sustained some damages from Irma. So what we're seeing today, it's been restored to its original state. So if we think about Vizcaya, it's lived for a hundred years and we want it to live for a hundred more at the very least. So we can continue to enjoy and learn from this historic state. Absolutely. So a lot of help and a lot of people created this beautiful structure that we have now here. And there is so much more to see and I can't wait to get to the inside because there's a ton of design details, a lot of rich history, and we are gonna continue doing that when we come back. Coming up, we look at the overwhelming challenge of transporting entire rooms from Europe to build a dream home on SoFlo Home Project. back to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra and we are now inside Vizcaya joined by curator Elena Gomez. Elena, so earlier we were outside looking at the front of the property, talking about a little bit of the history. And now here we are in one of the interior rooms. There are many. Mm -hmm. Which room would you call this? I'm assuming music room of some sort? That's correct. This is the music room. It's one of the decorative spaces that we have here at Vizcaya. It's one of the most elaborate ones or one that you know most people are surprised when they enter through those doors. It kind of makes you feel like you're going back in time. Back to what this is essentially Venice in the 1700s. James Deering dreamt of building Vizcaya as his personal winter wonderland. His artistic director, Paul Chalfin, spent four years collecting antiques, furnishings, and entire rooms before he could begin construction in 1914. 
What they first did was set out on a trip and they acquire many of the objects that we see today during that time. So even though construction began in 1914, they were acquiring art objects and furniture from as early as 1911, 1912. All of this was amassed in storage spaces in New York and Chelfin began kind of staging each room from afar from New York and um, Hoffman, the architect, would have to go to see what architectural features they had acquired in order to design the house around that. Now is each room themed differently or is there a continuity as we're going to turn through? Each room has its own style. Uh, they were looking at historical styles of different periods and different locations, like figures of Pudi, which are just winged uh, children uh, in Trompel Oil, which is just a, a French word to say, it's like fooling the eye. So it makes it look like there's actual um, carved stone on the walls, but they're paintings. It absolutely does. And there's so much depth when you see it and mm -hmm. detail. Mm -hmm. And of course, all of the gilding and all of the gold accented throughout. Yes, we see a lot of gold throughout the house, very much in the fashion of the time of the 1700s. So of course, it's not just about beauty in these rooms. There are some interesting features as well. And we are gonna show our viewers one that is in this specific room. And it's something that has to do with doors. But before we do that, let's check in with Mike Martinez from USA Windows and Doors and see what he has for us today. Hey, this is Mike with USA Windows and Doors. We're here in the warehouse so you can see the, all, the, all the options we have available to you. Here at USA Windows and Doors, we're all about solutions. Too many other companies out there, they offer one window, one solution, no other options. With us, we can go with ES Windows, we can go with PGT, CGI, you name it, we've got the option for you. If you're looking for large glass, Big storefront windows, we can do that. If you're looking for bay windows, we can do those, and we can do the small windows just as easily. The point is that we offer solutions where others are held by contracts. We do what, we, what others can't do, and that's bring lots of variety into your life. Every situation in every house is different. In your application, we'll send our professional consultant out to talk with you. That free estimate is not just about getting a price, it's also to find out what your needs are. Here at USA Windows and Doors, we're about solutions. You want to make sure you're protected in that next hurricane? Of course you do. But what about every single day? Energy efficiency. What if you're talking about making sure that you have some intruder protection? We at USA Windows and Doors, we're going to look at those things, we're going to ask you some basic questions, and we're going to provide you a solution. The solutions you see in the warehouse behind me. Here at USA Windows and Doors, the customer's needs are always first. Give us an opportunity to show you that we can provide the solution that you need. Call the number on the screen. Check us out on our website, usawindowsanddoors.com. Let us come out, give you what you need. Back to you, Elena. Thanks, Mike. So, Elena, we kind of tease our viewers a bit and let them know that there was a special feature in this particular room. You're correct. Well, so we know Vizcaya looks like families have lived here for centuries, but it was also a very modern state, a very modern house, and Deeran was very much interested in, in comfort and adding, you know, state-of-the-art equipment and all the technology that the time could have offered. So the door that's right next to you, uh, it's currently open, and a lot of our visitors look at it in awe and wonder and think, uh, well, it looks a little off. Uh, is it broken, uh, but it is not. It, it isn't that way because it's an automatic door. It's supposed to have a soft closing. The soft closed door is in between the music room and the formal dining room. So it would have served the purpose of like, since it's a music room, to be able to close the door softly while they're either entertainment, whether it's here or in the dining room. But also in terms of design, I think it's interesting to point out at the four doors that we see here, there's a lot of symmetry at Vizcaya, and that is made in many ways. And one of them was, if you set a door on one side, you have to have a door on the other one. So one of these doors is actually a fake door. It doesn't open or lead to anywhere. It's the one that's right behind you. Wow, so it definitely gives that beautiful symmetry. And of course, when you are designing with such detail, that really is an important part of making it all work. Coming up next, see how the design of this historic home included the latest modern amenities of its time on Soflo Home Project. I 
am Olivia Ray with Soplo Home Project and we are here with Mike from Stanley Steamer which you guys, it's a lot more than just cleaning your carpets. You guys do cleaning people's air ducts and so much more. It's kind of an overall service. Absolutely. A lot of people don't know that according to the EPA, on average, your home is five times more polluted than outdoor air. So it's basically sometimes safer to be outdoors than it is to be in your own home. Unless you call Stanley Steamer to come <laughs> clean your air ducts. Yes. Possibly. So when it comes to y'all services, I'm looking around here, you guys, there's a couple of different vents, but as a homeowner, what am I looking for? So you're gonna be looking for any visible signs of dirt, dust, debris, on or around the vent cover. So if you smell any musty odors, like that smells like microbial growth, or any other foul odor that doesn't smell right, there might be uh, an larger issue. So I'm looking around and there's a good amount of vents, so how many are in each home? The average home will have anywhere between 10 and 20 vents. So we will take down each individual vent cover and give each vent the special attention that it needs and deserves. Olivia, this is the heart of the home, the air handling unit. Okay, so it's a lot more than just cleaning the air ducts. This is the most important part of the cleaning process. Here is where you'll find the most of the buildup and the dirt, the grime will occur in here. This needs to be cleaned out. And so not everyone can work on this. You have to be certified. Correct. You do need to have a mechanical contractor's license to be able to work on an air handling unit. So after the cleaning is completed, uh, the system will work actually much more efficiently, which could reduce the electricity costs. So saving money, clean house, can't go wrong with that. What more could you ask for? This is the room in the house that I would want to be in, but obviously if you're sitting at the bar, you're chilling here, you want the air quality to be good, which is kind of why we're here, but uh -huh. there's some high ceilings in here, so are you guys able to take care of that? Yes, we can. Uh, no matter the job is big, small, tall, doesn't matter, we can take care of it. We do large commercial buildings, schools, uh, it doesn't matter what it is, you know, again, we, we can take care of it. So if I'm ready or anyone else is ready to jump into these services, do you guys have any incentives going on? Yes, call 1-800-STEAMER today and we're offering a 10% discount on any order. All right, perfect. Well, thanks so much for talking with us today. We appreciate it. Appreciate you, thank you so much. Welcome back to Soflo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra and we are here with Elena Gomez, the curator at the beautiful Vizcaya Museum and Gardens. So Elena, before the break, we saw the music room, which was very opulent, beautiful detailing. And here we're in the sunroom, a very different feel, still a lot of detail, still a lot of opulence, but in sort of a different way. Yes, we're standing right now in what we call today the enclosed loggia. So it's an open space with a lot of natural light. This is, takes on the neoclassical style, looking to the revival of Pompeii and Herculaneum in Italy. James Deering wanted each room in Vizcaya to reflect a particular architectural style and era, so that when visitors walked through the home, they would be transported to a different time and place. And now when, when I look at the stained glass windows, there's some details in there. Mm -hmm. We see the seahorse, we see the boats. Are those symbolic? Yes, those are actually the symbols of Vizcaya. We have the carabel, which is a vessel that was used during the age of exploration. Dion was very much uh, interested in that theme. Um, we also have the seahorses. Dion wanted his symbol to be the carabel, his emblem, but Shelfin liked the seahorse. So, so this we is have a compromise. <laughs> there's a compromise, and there's an anecdote there where there's a um, you know we have over 20,000 pieces of correspondence that relate to the construction, the building of Vizcaya. And there's a telegram from Deering to Chalfen that says something like, about 20 times, at least 20 times, we've talked about this, this the Kerbal being the emblem of Vizcaya and the seahorse being incidental and secondary. But we ended up with two seahorses. We ended up with two seahorses. <laughs> you will see both seahorses and carabels throughout the state in many different shapes and forms. That's beautiful. I can imagine when these doors are open to the outside, when everything, it's a full entertaining space. I mean, so many different areas to spend time in. And we have that also has multiple doors that we saw that in the music room. We're seeing these the doors, symmetry too. There's symmetry and these doors lead, lead to other spaces. So. Do they all open or do we have some hidden? 
We have a door that does not open. This one this is one. actually a hidden door. Exactly. But still so much detailing. And of course, as you look around, a lot of the different things, the look of stone painted on the wall. Yes. We have marbling on the walls, but they're actually paintings. They're not actually stone. And we do have, as you said, very different feel. So we have a lot of architectural vistas uh, throughout the space. Speaking of architectural, we cannot not talk about the doors, the, the height, the beauty. So we talked about some elements that were purchased early on and that they defined or helped define the spaces at Vizcaya and this is one of those, we call it the Pisani Gate because it came from uh, one of the Pisani palaces in, in Venice. And it's grandiose, it's very tall and it set the height for the breakfast room. So the breakfast room is raised up. Yeah, we talk about kind of adapting the build to fit certain things and all of these beautiful items that were imported from Europe to create the grandness of the space. So we have grand lighting as well, and lighting in itself, being in this home, very special. We see a lot of lighting. It's um, modern technology, right, electricity, but what we see here at Vizcaya, that it's a little bit in the sky. So we see all these elements that look like antique objects, but instead right. of holding candles, they hold electricity. So while Deering wanted for the state to be up to modern standards, Chalfin wanted to disguise all of this. So this was, again, that wonderful compromise. So mm -hmm. there are two kind of creative visions coming together. I think when you move from room to room in Vizcaya, I think uh, it's always a surprise Price, but you also have to take it as a whole. It really is like an immersive experience. Absolutely, and we are gonna keep our audience immersed in all this because we've got one more stop and we are going to bring you all through it at home when we come back. Next, we uncover some Vizcaya Museum hidden design features on SoFlo Home Project. Soflow Home Project. I'm Elena Capra and we are here with Elena Gomez, the curator at Vizcaya Museum and Garden. So Elena, before the break, we had seen the sunroom, which was bright and airy, but in this particular space, it definitely has that kind of library-like feel. What was this room used specifically for? It's a lot darker than the other rest of the spaces and it would have been used as like a formal meeting area. Deering. So this particular bookcase is quite stunning. It's very much a showpiece. Yes, it's a very large bookcase. It's uh, made of mahogany and it's a Georgian style bookcase. And it is a special element in this room. As we see, we have his like really broad collection of literature. And what is interesting about this bookcase, and I'm gonna get closer to it, and I'm going to put these nitrite gloves because I will be touching the piece of furniture. Uh, we've talked about how elements came to Vizcaya and they're retrofitted for right. the space and this is one of those cases where if we look down here we can see these are pull-out slides. I'm gonna, not going to pull it out all the way out but the, what this indicates is the bookcase originally was probably meant to sit at a higher level. Right, so you have uh, more of that shelf type of to place books. And that's like exactly that. right but there's another element to the bookcase so it looks you know like a regular bookcase but if you take a closer look you see there's like some sort of like hinge there ah, and this is amazing you can open it so it truly and is it, a hidden doorway door. like the things that you always think about in homes of this stature there might be that amazing We've so, talked about doors, many doors, so the theme of doors is repeats and serves as like uh, an element to create symmetry, but it also creates very special passageways. Absolutely. As you see, this is a really intimate space and it would have allowed Deering to go from one space to the other, kind of through the back ways, right? Well, I absolutely love the way it was hidden because here I'm seeing the depth of the door, just the spines mm -hmm. of the books, and then on the rest you have the actual books. Now in the rest of this room, I'm seeing a lot of darker mahogany woods. We've got a lot of moldings as well, a lot of mm -hmm. plaster molds. Plaster moldings, yes. Um, and also like a lot of pastel colors. If you see in the, the, the yellows and the blues, it is inspired after British architects of the 18th century. So there's some British themes in this room. So it takes on, as we've seen from many different, we're traveling through Europe, through many different countries and time periods. So I love that because it's absolutely giving us a little bit of everything. Thing, and that helps you see all of the different things that came through to create this one beautiful home. Mm -hmm. Well, it has been quite a great tour so far and we are not done yet because we're gonna be back next week with another tour through 
Vizcaya as we see more of this beautiful historic home. So I want to thank you, Elena. Thank you. And now let's take a sneak peek of what we've got in store for part two of this tour of Vizcaya Museum and Gardens next week on SoFlo Home Project. We take you into the private areas of this villa where we find hidden doors and look at the modern amenities of this 1916 mansion. So I want to thank you all for watching and we hope that you join us again next week for another all new episode of SoFlo Home Project right here on Local 10. And remember, there's no place like SoFlo Home. If you missed any part of this episode, or if you're looking for more design inspiration, make sure to check out all episodes online at SoFloShows.com. And don't forget to follow us on social media on Facebook and Instagram. 